All of the 16th century was ruled by the Tudor monarchs in England and Wales, and Elizabeth I was the last of the Tudor monarchs. And it started in 1485 when you had um, Henry Tudor, who became Henry VII, and his son, Henry VIII, and then Henry VIII's three children, Edward, and Mary, and Elizabeth. And Elizabeth came to the throne in 1558, and she inherited the throne at really quite a difficult time. You had some major questions about religion and uh, about the economy. There were enormous number of changes, social and cultural changes in the Elizabethan period. Perhaps first and foremost was re religious changes because Elizabeth I brought the whole of the country over, both uh, first of all in theory and then a pretty much in practice, over to the Protestant faith. And Elizabeth did something really quite clever with the Church of England by creating a Church of England that almost pleased no one, but had enough of the reformed ideology to keep the reformers happy and enough of the conservative ideology to keep the sort of silent majority also happy. So it was a very, very clever trick. And sometimes the Church of England is called a sort of Mongol beast in some ways because it had all of these elements of both reform religion and uh, to a degree, some elements of Roman Catholicism. Um, and it did something incredibly clever, which allowed the country to stay um, really uh, faithful to the Queen. There were other sorts of changes too, um, and in particular, the rise of middle classes. And you have um, a great growth in population, but also particularly a growth in the city of London. London gets much bigger over the course of Elizabeth's reign. Elizabeth reigns for 45 years. You have this wonderful period of economic stability, but you also have an opportunity um, in terms of the economy, um, which grows enormously at this period. So there are changes to do with um, a scaling up, really, of uh, people's interest and desire in luxury goods, and therefore you get uh, more and more merchants who become more and more successful. And over time, they need all sorts of other services, including legal services. So the number of professional people and the number of, of merchants really goes up in the course of Elizabeth's reign. One other really important uh, feature of Elizabethan life was, of course, that the known world itself was expanding. And that was mapped through cartography, people making uh, new maps of the whole of the globe. But also, of course, Britain, as a really important maritime nation, was um, exploring different parts of the world. And we had the beginnings of fledgling colonies in the Americas but also the huge development of trade with the rest of the world. So it wasn't just Europe. All European nations were trading with different parts of Europe, uh, different parts of the world. And we had some really um, an enormous expansion of trade in this period with luxury goods coming from really quite far away, particularly from the far and the Middle East. 